Thought I'd do a quick video on the return of my ICOM ICR71A communications receiver. And you can see it now on top of my Kenwood R2000. Uh, over the last couple of months, uh, this ICOM has uh, crossed the country no less than four times. That's right, four times times. I give you a Reader's Digest version of uh, what happened to this radio and how it finally made it back home. I found a gentleman through ICOM USA. ICOM no longer services this radio and they were kind enough to provide me with a few names of some ICOM authorized uh, repair facilities. And I found this gentleman out in Washington State, knew exactly what I wanted to have done. And they give you kind of a, well, this radio is um, just about perfect. Um, the R71A is probably one of the finest communications uh, receivers uh, ever built. But it does have an Achilles heel, and that is the capacitors on the PLL board. And uh, there are trim capacitors, which for some reason, uh, ICOM made out of plastic and not non-ceramic. Well, what happened is these capacitors uh, would go bad and send this radio into uh, crazy squeals, uh, especially on single sideband. Um, on, on this radio, now I bought this radio in, I think, 1994. And what would happen is about 15 minutes after uh, the radio would be powered up, it would go into crazy oscillations and sometimes they'd go away, but usually they would stay. But um, this radio um, has been a, uh, it's been a top, top performer for me for all this time. Uh, but it was time for some service. So I communicated with the gentleman over email uh, he knew exactly what the issue was. I shipped it off to him. And he did the work. Shipped the radio back. Plugged the radio in. And sure enough, the radio was dead as a doornail. Um, I reached out to him. Um, described the issue. He knew what the uh, problem was. Apparently there's a coax cable inside that can come loose on shipping. And uh, the folks at UPS uh, don't handle boxes uh, very gently. So back off she went uh, back to Washington State. A few days later, I got an email from him and he told me that this knob right here which is the passband tuning knob. This knob had broke. And when I mean broke, um, it, it wasn't anything. <laughs> this whole thing was just bent and smashed and UPS uh, yet again uh, in their uh, infinite wisdom um, I'm telling you guys, they are bulls in a china shop. This radio was packed inside the original Icon box with the original styrofoam, uh, boxed again inside an outer box, and then styrofoam material all the way around it. And they still managed to damage this. We reached out to UPS. UPS uh, couldn't find my office, even though they come there daily. Uh, one time I waited for them until seven o'clock. 
Now let me give you a little tip on UPS. Drivers do not carry cell phones, so you can give them your name, your address, your phone number. If they are lost, they're not going to contact you. So, um, finally, on, on the fourth attempt, one of my coworkers told me that the UPS guy was in the building. So, I was able to flag him down at work. Uh, he was on the second floor at another office. He picked it up, put a sticker on it, and it went to a return facility, uh, what they call uh, damage control for a few days. And I explained to the gentleman, UPS has no oscilloscopes or signal generators, or there's no way they're going to be able to, to troubleshoot this thing. So anyways, um, they finally were able to, to pick uh, the damn thing up and uh, well four times going across the country uh, from here to Washington uh, from Washington to here uh, from here to Washington and then back home finally on the East Coast so this radio has got some miles on it um, I was thrilled today when it finally made it back. And uh, years ago, when I had ICOM uh, install a high stability crystal, I don't know if you can see right here, there's this piece of trim plastic with a little notch above the uh, tuning knob. ICOM had lost that. And I contacted ICOM and they said, oh, well, we, we don't stock that part anymore. So. Um, you know, it didn't look bad, but this was missing and, um, was pleased when it, when it arrived today, uh, that the, uh, technician had actually, uh, put one of these back on. So it looks great. It works great. Uh, this knob, uh, he was able to finally had a hard time finding that part, but was able to source one online. Um, but this radio is home. This radio is working great. I'm not going to bore you again with, uh, uh, WWV or whatever the, the 15 megahertz station, uh, WWH, or I think it's WWV out of, uh, Fort Collins, but fits really nice on top of the uh, Kenwood fits in my little uh, shelf unit we've got the external speaker uh, the ICOM up top and my DSP my Radio Shack DSP 40 works great so anyways this long nightmare is finally over. Um, picked up a few new subscribers on my channel. I now have over 200 subscribers. Thanks guys and gals for subscribing. Um, I try to provide some good content and uh, hopefully some, some helpful information for you. So anyways, happy DXing, happy shortwave listening, and hope you enjoyed this video. Um, Finally, my ICOM is back home, uh, missing for about two months, two months out of action, so well worth the wait. Goodbye for now.